Would you please pray with me? Gracious Lord, thank you for bringing the message of the gospel to us tonight through the voice of angels. Lord, we pray that your word would scatter the darkness of this world, that your word would scatter the darkness of our lives as we focus on, on you, for you are light of light. You are the light of the world. You are the light of our lives. Speak, O Lord, for your people are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text for this Christmas Eve service comes from that powerful reading from the prophet Isaiah, read just a few minutes ago. Isaiah chapter 9, and I would like to read verse 2 and verses 6 and 7 again. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is our text. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. First of all, Merry Christmas to all of you. It's just always so wonderful to see the church full, to hear the choirs, the instruments, to see the extra chairs set up and to see the crowds that are here to hear the message of the one who is the light of the world. Jesus is at the very center of Christmas. And we can never forget that, whether this is the worst of times or the best of times in our lives. Charles Dickens' novel, A Christmas Carol, is about Ebenezer Scrooge and how his heart was changed one Christmas. And we all love that story because, well, they all lived happily ever after. But the lines from another one of Dickens' novels, I think, more accurately describe the way Christmas feels for many of us in his other classic novel, A Tale of Two Cities. And that book, A Tale of Two Cities, begins with these infamous words. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of unbelief. It was the season of light. And it was the season of darkness. It was a spring of hope. And it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, and we had nothing before us. Christmas is a time of, of contrast, isn't it? It's a time of prosperity, and for others it is a time of poverty. It's a season of goodwill, and it can be a season of ugly greed. Christmas is a time of family togetherness, and for some, it can also be a time of excruciating loneliness. It's a season of light. It's a season of darkness. Christmas is a spring of hope. And Christmas is the winter of acute despair. Now, don't get me wrong. We all want this to be the best of times. And we all want to have 
a Merry Christmas. That's why we decorate and that's why we donate and that's why we shop until we drop. We put up trees, we, we hang tinsel, we cook turkeys and, and ham and put together all kinds of toys only to realize that we forgot to buy the batteries. <laughs> Happens to me almost every year. I think it could just be said that we all want a holly jolly Christmas. But let's be honest. As much as we all want Christmas to be the best of times, sometimes it can be the worst of times. And I think that our reading from Isaiah 9 resonate, resonates with a tale of two cities because the prophet's message is also one of contrast. It was a season of light and it was also a season of darkness. This is what Isaiah says, Isaiah 9, verse 2. He says, the people who walked in darkness, those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness. You see, for 430 years, the Israelites had wandered in the darkness and then God rescued them. And for the next 40 years, they, they continued to wander in the, in the wilderness until finally they inherited God's promise and entered into the promised land, the land beyond the Jordan, the land of the nations, the land of the Gentiles. And they enjoyed the promised land for 700 years. But fast forward with me now to 700 years after their entrance into the promised land. And this is the time when Isaiah is living. And this is the time when Isaiah is writing. This is though the time that darkness descends on them. This is when they are attacked by the Assyrian army. And the Israelites' armies were defeated. Their cities were leveled. Thousands were killed. And many of them were exiled into distant lands. For them now, it was the worst of times. It was the best of times when they were living in the, in the promised land. And now they've been conquered by a, by a foreign army, a foreign government. And for them, they are now living again in darkness. And it is the worst of times. They walked in darkness and dwelt in the land of deep darkness. We all know about deep darkness, I believe. Perhaps not exactly what the Israelites felt, unless you've ever been conquered by a, by a foreign army or had to face them. There may be some servicemen and women that are here tonight who have seen that kind of darkness. And for those men and women in uniform tonight, we thank you for your service, helping to bring light into this world. But even if it's not that heavy or that deep, others of us definitely know about Darkness. Maybe you've just spent too much money. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you were worried sick about your financial future. Others are struggling with health. Maybe you're struggling with the health of a loved one. Maybe you're wondering if this might be the last Christmas that you will be spending with that loved one. Or maybe this is your first Christmas without your loved one by your side. Some are just wrestling with old hurts that won't heal, and others are wrestling with new wounds that just won't go away. Others are missing loved ones this Christmas, either because of, of, of distance, because of death, or perhaps just because of cruel design. But there's another kind of darkness, and I think this is an even more foreboding darkness. And the Gospel of John, John, the Gospel writer, he, he tells about this darkness in John chapter 3, verse 19, when he says, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. In other words, too often we love darkness instead of the light. 
Sometimes we love the darkness of just self-centeredness. We live in this darkness of lies and and half-truths and long for more for darkness that comes with the sinful desires of the flesh. Is this the end of the story? Not on your life. (laughs) This, thanks be to God, is not the end of the story. And here's the rest of what Isaiah has to say in in chapter 9, verse 2. He says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And this isn't just an ordinary light. Isaiah says that this is a great light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And that light, of course, was yet to appear, but but Isaiah sees it. He sees it. He sees it exactly the way it is, and he writes about it, and he speaks about it. He prophesies about it because he wants the people to have light in the midst of their darkness. And so he says, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is majesty in the midst of the mundane. This is light coming in the darkness of midnight. This is holiness in the in the middle of cattle manure. <laughs> this is divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable through the womb of a teenager in the presence of a carpenter. Jesus is the light that took on flesh so that he might take you into his arms and heal your wounds, binding up all of your hurts, forgiving your sin, and destroying, utterly destroying your darkness. Jesus took on flesh not to demonstrate the innocence of infancy, but in order to live the life that we could not and to die the death so that we need not. He's this dazzling light, this brilliant light. This is an eternal light. It's why we say in the Nicene Creed what the church has been confessing for literally hundreds of years, that this is light of light. And it doesn't get any any brighter. Isaiah continues in verse 7, he says, Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Did you hear that? No end. This light will never end. The darkness will never return. The grave held Jesus for three days, but he arose. He is now alive, and his promises are sure, and his light shines, and there will be no end, no end to his love. Jesus is at the very center of the Christmas story. And I want to tell you a brief story tonight to remind you that Jesus really is the reason for the season. That he is at the center of our gathering tonight. He is at the center of our our Christmas celebrations. It was on December 17th, 1903, when Orville and Wilbur Wright first flew. And when they flew on that December 17th, just shortly before Christmas, they sent a telegraph to their sister Catherine, who lived in Dayton, Ohio. And in that telegraph, they said, flew 120 feet, (laughs) we'll be home for Christmas. And their sister Catherine was so excited that she took that telegraph to the editor of the, of the local newspaper in Dayton, Ohio, and showed it to him, and he read it, and he said, oh, I'm so happy the boys will be here for Christmas. <laughs> and they completely missed the point. 
someone had taken flight, they had flown in an airplane for the first time ever. The very first time, and that was big news. And I'm just wondering tonight, how often do we miss the big news at Christmas? When we get caught up in the tinsel and the toys and the trees and all the trimmings, those things are nice. I love them. And I can be just like a kid at Christmas. I love it all. But really, it's not just nice like the Wright brothers being home for Christmas. It's so much more than that. Because that's not the big news. It's not the big news of all the other trimmings and trappings of this season. The big news of Christmas is that God took flight. (laughs) That's wonderful news. That is great news. God took flight and he traveled from heaven to earth and he took on human flesh. And he was born light of the world to be the light of your lives. To be the light shining in this place, to be the light shining in your homes and in your hearts, to be the light shining over our nation, to be the light that shines over the whole world. Jesus is at the very center of Christmas because he is the light. He is the light that penetrates the darkness and that scatters it forever and forever and forever. And so whether tonight is for you the best of times or, or the worst of times or the spring of hope or the winter of despair, the birth of Jesus who was announced by Isaiah, who was heralded by the angels, who was visited by the Magi, who was glorified by simple shepherds, that they are the ones who leave us with that good news tonight. And what would that be again? What is the good news? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. The light is shining on you tonight. And the light of the gospel of Jesus, born for you, shines in you tonight. May it be so for Jesus' sake. Amen.
Lights of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, you brought the light of life into the darkness of our sinful world. Shine that light on us that we may be kept in the one true faith. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the miracle of your birth and for the miracle of our Assure us of your baptismal promise, so that we who are born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, may live each day as the children of light. Light of the world, hear our prayer, and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, the world is made through you, that the world does not know you. Give to us and all your people the joy and zeal of the shepherds, so that we also may make known the truth that we have been called out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, provide for those without homes or jobs or food or friends in this sacred season. Assure them that even when no one else seems to care, you will never abandon them. With the gifts you have given to us, use us to provide for everyone in need, so that through us, even those most destitute may experience your providing care. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, you came to abolish death and bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. Receive our praise and hear our prayers. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear now these words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup as he suffered. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
drink with your blood. I'm going to go to the place and the remission of all your sins.
I strengthen you and keep you in both body and soul, and want your faith now and on life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The candles we light tonight remind us of the light that Jesus brings into the world through his birth in Bethlehem. On a silent night, the earth exploded with the praise of angels and shepherds. Jesus gives us the gift of his holiness, not just tonight, but wherever and whenever his word is present.
joy and peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Very good.